So I went out for another year on those ice caps, and I was doing this mass balance assessment. I mentioned mass balance before. This is this idea of you're trying to see whether your glacier or ice cap is growing or shrinking. It's fairly low tech, at least what we were doing. Basically, you drill holes, put a stake down into the uh, ice cap or glacier, and you come and you measure how the distance between the bottom of that stake and the top of that stake. That's all you do. It's just a number, right? And you measure the the snow depth and the density. And then you would come back the next year to do the same thing. If more stake is showing, it means it shrank. If less stake is showing, that means it grew. And the idea is we were going to put in this big network of stakes, so or we did put in this big network. Oops, uh, get back here. This big network of stakes here. You can see that's my old field book, actually, uh, from the time. Uh, if you're a climate scientist like this, you never throw away your old field books. They, they stay on your shelf forever, right? Um, and uh, so this was just a stake networking, as you can see all these locations of the stakes. And the idea is, and this is my, one of my field assistants uh, back then, Mike Pilecki, uh, drilling into uh, the ice uh, to put in one of these stakes. And the idea is that we were going to go back year after year after year and uh, do these sort of measurements and see what was happening uh, to this ice cap. But uh, life got in the way. I uh, got my master's thesis published, and then uh, I went on to do other things, and I never went back to those ice caps. Well, it was a couple years ago when I walked past a colleague of mine at the National Snow and Ice Data Center who was doing um, a project to measure, map all of the world's glaciers with high-resolution satellite imagery. You might have thought we'd have maps of all the world's glaciers by now. We don't, okay? But uh, he was involved in this project to, to do this. Um, and so I walked in. I said, hey, Bruce, maybe you could find some images from the Hazen Plateau where I did this work, and let's, let's check out my little ice caps, right, to see how they have, uh, how they have fared. So he looked for a while and finally found uh, some data, and he found it for a few other years, and we started to do some comparisons. And here's what we found. So that blue outline of the ice caps, that was what we had in 1959. So you could take this, this aerial photograph and you could digitize it and you could find an outline of the glaciers, of the ice, of the ice caps. And it turns out in 2001, Ray Bradley, that was my advisor I mentioned, he'd gone with sort of his next generation of graduate students out there and they'd done a GPS survey to find out the edge. So you saw it was shrinking. But those two inner ones, that's from the satellite data we found, 2014, 2015. And we just found some data for last year, uh, summer, to plot on on that. I don't know the updates here. The ice caps are dead. Uh, right now, there's a couple of patches left, maybe the size of a football field or something like that. And that is when, that day, I remember when we saw those images, that was when climate change became really a very personal thing to me. Oh, sure, I've been doing research for years, uh, focusing on things going on in the Arctic and climate issues, all sorts of things I was working on. Um, and we knew the Arctic was changing. Sure, we did. Uh, but um, that made it personal. You know, to find that my little ice caps are dead. You think of an ice cap as, so this is a permanent thing. These don't die over the course of, you know, 20 years or something like this. And it, it you know, it did. It's just crazy. So. Um, it became personal at that point. So let's flash forward a bit and ask the question, what does the Arctic look like today? Where are we today? It's certainly not what it used to be. One of the things we see in the Arctic now that's emerged over the past couple decades is this thing called Arctic amplification. Well, what's this? Well, a long time ago, this bright guy, Savanti Arrini, way back in 1896, said that if we increase the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, he called it carbonic acid back then, he said if we increase the concentration, and we should be because we're in the industrial you know, age now, that uh, the uh, Earth ought to warm, and that that warming should be biggest in the polar regions. Why? I mentioned that albedo feedback thing. The idea that if you cooled it down, then more of the snow and ice survives, and it's bright, it makes it even cooler, it's just working in reverse. Right? 
So we have an Arctic, of course, Arctic is snow, right? Snow and ice. And we warm it up a little bit by some mechanism. Well, we melt some of that bright snow and ice cover. We expose the darker surfaces that are underneath. Those darker surfaces absorb more of the sun's energy than the bright surfaces. And so it furthers the warming and causes even more melt. That's what he was getting at. This guy, in 1896, basically had this figured out. Now, he wasn't quite right, because we know it's not both polar regions. We know it's really the Arctic that's driving the show right now. This, the changes we see in the Antarctic are slower. Okay? They're emerging. We just saw something this morning about how the Antarctic ice sheet loss is accelerating, right? But right now, the big changes are in the Arctic. The Antarctic is following. It's kind of the 800-pound elephant that is starting to stir. Okay? But, so, but basically, this guy, Savantiarides, had it pinned down in 1896 what was going to happen. Well, here we are right now. This is looking at the temperature change uh, over the planet uh, from 1960 to 2017. It's a linear trend analysis. It's just kind of a straight line fit, and it's showing what the changes has been since then. And what you see is in the warm colors, that's where it's warming over this period. And what you see, of course, is just about everywhere is warming, right? Global warming, right? But it's not even across the globe, right? Some places have warmed more. Some places have warmed less. Where has the biggest warming occurred? In the Arctic, just as, we, just as he had predicted. And when our first climate models were coming out, Back in the 1970s, uh, Jim Hansen, who will be here tomorrow, might talk about that. Uh, he was one of the early developers of these models. They were all saying that this should occur at some point when we load the atmosphere with carbon dioxide. Here we are, right now. There it is. The Arctic amplification has emerged. A really clear case of theory being backed up by observations. I mean, it's just, you know, we thought this was going to happen. It did. It's sort of a case where uh, I hate to say we told you so, but uh, we did. Right? It's exactly what happened.